He was taking that water and spraying a little bit on the chain, trying to be able to get some of the mud off that. Going to keep the tempo going down. What kind of gap will he have? That'll be the big question. It'll be interesting to be able to see. But Blevins just, just driving it, not slowing down. You know, at this point, knowing that that big of a gap, he knows he can win this. So now a little bit's about training. You know, kind of getting ready maybe for some other objectives a little bit later on in the year. Going to be able to kind of keep that momentum and keep that speed. Have to remember, though, this is day number one of three days of racing here at the Moose Jaw U.S. Pro Cup presented by Oz Trails. But really, this is a, this is an important one. This is a, a big one with UCI points. This is the one they want to be able to tackle. And this is why many of the, you know, Olympians, national champions, previous world champions have all come to Fayetteville, Arkansas, to be able to tackle this mountain bike course right here in Fayetteville. Nice shot, Cole Patton coming into that final area before he heads into our start finish line. Some of the juniors starting to be able to warm up as they're getting ready for their event coming up next. And again, it's junior women will be coming up next. And then our junior men, the UCI junior women racing at 1.30 p.m. That's the schedule. And then our junior men, our final event showing up at 3 p.m. Oh, I like the numbers on the back of the jerseys. That's pretty cool. So bells are ringing and the crowd is cheering because this is coming through our start finish line. Unofficially second place. It was one minute, then it was two minutes, and right now Cole Platten comes through, and it is... What is that gap? Two minutes and 12 seconds. So the gap has gone up a little bit. Two minutes and 12 seconds, but it's not really going to be a matter. What Cole Patton has to worry about is what's behind him, and he's going to have a plenty of space on third place. So it's job done, mission accomplished for Cole Patton as he has secured that second place as long as they can get through this last lap with no mechanicals. And the same being said for the winner, Christopher Blevins, if he can get through. Third place just showing himself now, Tyler Orschel. So Orschel is going to show at about 30 seconds back, almost 30 seconds back as Orschel comes through. That's third place as he comes through. Tyler Orschel out of Ontario, Canada, racing for that Canyon Development Racing Team. In 2021, he was 28th at the World Championships, and I talked about him being 8th place here, so that's a massive improvement. Andrew LeSperance now coming through from Maxis. So Tyler Orschel last lap was with Cole Patton. He got dropped from Cole Patton, so that's a sign, I think, that he's going a little bit slower. Andrew LeSperance maybe starting to be able to pick up the pace a little bit, and that'll be interesting to see. Can LeSperance get up there to get himself into a podium spot? And, of course, Tyler Orschel wants to be able to hang on to that third spot. What is... This is a rider having trouble right here. Not sure if that's our race leader having a ton of trouble in a section of the, the trail, almost like coming off and not able to get his footing and get going again. And I think that was, that was Blevins. So that was really... Weird in that replay where he will he pretty much came to a complete standstill and then had to be able to walk himself on a certain part of the race course. And that's just a matter of, you know, a little bit of a, the wrong line and, of course, getting a little bit of tired legs and a tired mind. Oh, having a problems with this chain right here. One of the Trek Factory Bear, or excuse me, one of the Bear National Team Riders. Not a lot of fun when you have to be self-supported out there to be able to take care of your own bike, your own equipment, as all the riders coming through getting bell app. Coming up on one hour and 30 minutes of racing, an hour and 30 minutes of racing as the riders are coming through, and they all are having one lap to go. 
Still trying to be able to work on that chain, trying to be able to get it on the right cassette so we can kind of get going. Not sure where it's jammed. So hopefully he gets that figured out so we can make it back. Otherwise, it's going to be a long walk all the way back to the start-finish line. Looks like mission accomplished. So a little bit of mechanical skills coming into play right there as one of the riders from the Bear National team is underway once again. Let's see if we can get that number. I'll tell you who that was. Dry conditions, packed conditions, fast conditions. That is what has turned in to the, to the Centennial Park mountain bike course. The wind has dried things out. The women raced a little bit earlier, packing things down. Still a little bit muddy spots. You can see the mud all over the bike and all over the riders. And for Christopher Blevins, it's proved no problems. Great traction, great bike setup. And right now, he seems to have found the legs that he needed on day number one here. Building up a lead at 2 minutes and 12 seconds. Blevins will be a two-time winner here once he gets to the line as he won here in 2021. Now coming back, really ripping apart the trail here. Coming across the line right now, we're going to be 11th place. That is going to be Lucas Vroenvelder. So Gunnar Holmgren at one point was in going fighting for third place, so he's dropped back almost to 10th. Vroenvelder doing a good ride coming in. Again, that's going to be 11th place for Vroenvelder. If he can hang on to that, obviously he's being chased down also. That's Vroenvelder from Giant Factory Off-Road Team, a six-time national champion. Last year he was second at Cross Country Marathon National Championships. Sitting in 11th place right now. Nice group of three right here. Carson Beard, Cole Punchard, Carson Beckett, and Owen Clark. 13th, 14th, and 15th. So UCI points are going to be out of reach for one of these riders here. As So Owen Clark last let their brothers were together. The, so I'm not sure where the other brother went to, but obviously a little bit of a separation right now. Looking back at some of the other riders coming through. I'm going to try to be able to figure out what team this is. That has the numbers on the back. I like those jerseys. Going to have to try to snag me one of those. Pretty cool setup that they got right there as we go back to Blevins. So top 15 are going to get UCI points. After that, you're going to be out of UCI points. And so that's a big reason why many of these riders have come here. Coming through right there is, there's the other Clark brother. He's just a little bit further down, about 30 seconds down. So Owen Clark's in front, Tyler Clark, then Sean Fincham, Robbie Day, Jerry Dufour, Russell Finsterwald back in 20th place. A lot of under 23 riders actually are in this race. I think almost 50 riders. Out of the 90 riders, 50 of them are young riders, are under 23 riders. And so something to be trying to figure out, you know, there's only so much time in the day if you can have a separate under 23 category. Uh, so that's something to be uh, considered for 2022. Moose Jaw U.S. Pro Cup presented by Oz Trails right now is looking at your leader, Christopher Blevins, as he continues to power away he had a one-minute gap, then a two-minute gap, two minutes and 12 with the bell lap. And Cole Patton is the one that's chasing after him. And then Tyler Orschel and Andrew Lesperance fighting for the podium. A little bit of a gap between them. It's going to be interesting to see if the Maxis Factory rider team can kind of catch back up to Tyler Orschel.
A little bit of downhills on the rock gardens, a little bit of uphills on the rock gardens as well. Cole Patton, look at him struggling through that. This is the technical part that I was talking about. Mountain bikers have a skill that they have developed and are able to just get through some of the toughest terrain and make it look easy. And Cole Patton is doing a great job of getting through this. you got to remember also, this is after having your heart rate pegged through the roof for the last hour and a half. Lactic acid building up, the muscles starting to fatigue and get tired. And so you have to be able to keep pushing through. Second place on the line, and Cole Patton, that is the position he's in. Pretty big gaps, though. He doesn't, you know, he can ride steadily. He can ride within himself, and he's going to be able to make it there. Dennis Van Winden, his coach, sitting on the right-hand side right there, yelling a few little instructions. Hopefully he's pleased with the performance coming from Cole Patton because this is a great ride by him, and I believe Cole Patton is leaving um, Friday. I think he's leaving Friday, going to some high-altitude camp to be able to get ready for some later races, so he will not be racing on the final day here on Sunday. But mission accomplished, getting some valuable UCI points as more riders are coming across. Now we're coming through about top 25. That was Braden Johnson coming through in 25th. Joel Perez in 24th. Charles Antoine St. Ange sitting in 23rd. And Daxton Mack in 22nd. In the meantime, there's a nice shot of Patton once again. And a big thank you to Orange Seal for their support of the Moose Jaw U.S. Pro Cup along with Kinda Tire as well. So didn't see Christopher Blevins coming through Oz Mountain, coming over the rock jump, but Blevins is two, hour, two minutes and 12 seconds last time in front. Cole Patton now coming across. Going down the six-foot drop, now making his way back into the woods until he makes his way back out here to the plateau. And then the final S turns before coming in to the finish. The drone doing a great job following the race leader, Blevins. Blevins came in as the favorite, and he has the number one number on his bike for good reason. Blevins out of San Luis Obispo, California. Blevins actually comes from a BMX background. Started racing in BMX, then moved over to mountain biking and has had huge success winning that short track world championships last year and now coming in trying to be able to repeat as your two-time winner here at the Moose Jaw US Pro Cup presented by Oz Trails. Great drone shot right now, getting ready. The final S turns before he comes onto the cement and then it's going to be a victory celebration. The crowd sees him and they're ringing the bells. They're cheering his name. Time to relax. A celebration. It's Christopher Blevins, your 2022 U.S. Pro Cup champion. Congratulations. What a ride for Christopher Blevins. Man, looks like he wasn't even tired. Was able to just kind of take his time and pace himself during that last part. So Blevins comes across. Going to try to be able to see what kind of time gap we have going into our next Riders. So nice job, Christopher Blevins. Congratulations, repeating as your winner. Specialized factory team racing. Look how muddy the bike is and everything else on there. Tackled the course with ease. Different riders came up to challenge him. It was Riley Amos right in the beginning. Actually, the very beginning, it was Woods who did. Then Riley Amos and then some other riders tried to be able to get within 30 seconds of him, but nobody could latch onto the back of the wheel as it's high fives all around as your winner, Christopher Blevins, repeats as champion here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. So we had a gap of about 2 minutes and 12 seconds to Cole Patton as we're waiting for the rider from the Orange Seal off-road team make his way in. Time gap's not really going to matter. It's the second place that's going to matter. And especially it's not going to matter for the Athlos Champion Challenge. Now remember, this is a huge lead that Christopher Blevins is going to have for the Athlos Champion Challenge, which crowns the overall best rider with the lowest cumulative time over the three races. 
$2,500 going five places deep. Equal payout for the men and women. Athlos. They make custom cycling gear. You can go find some more information if you Google Athlos Cycling Clothing. But free artwork, no minimums, completed four weeks from the artwork approval at Athlos Custom Cycling Gear. So a nice kind of added benefit to not only the individual days here, but kind of combining them into a series to be able to make the Athlos Champion Challenge. So Cole Patton now coming in through some of those final S turns. Talked about the great ride he did at Sea Otter. He also won two races in Spain in February. So he started off with a lot of form, started off with some good spirits, and he's got to be, I should be happy with his result here. Last year, he was fourth at this race, and this year, he is second. So it's a silver medal ride. As for Cole Patton, as he's all smiles coming across the line. All right, good job, Cole Patton, second place. Two minutes and 51 seconds down. Again, losing a little bit more time, but not important, as that secures second place for Cole Patton, and that's what he wanted. Now third place, Andrew Lesperance was in fourth. He was trying to be able to catch up to Tyler Orschel, and it looks like the rider in the black jersey. Temperature 75 degrees, but it doesn't matter. Orschel is heating up. He's got it all undone. The rider from Canyon Development Racing Team. He was eighth here. Last year in 2021, and that's going to be a big improvement for Orschel. Orschel going from eighth in 2021 to a whopping third place, which puts him on the podium. So a great ride, Tyler Orschel coming across the line. So a nice ride by him.